Look at that. A chef arrived. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's a basic mix of uh, 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 pork we're having tonight, onions, tomato, lots of garlic, a few bit of fennel, bit of cumin. Oh, very nice. Let it season. Very nice. Tobago Trinidad curry. The garlic go go brown in that base oil, and the, the colours will tell you when everything's ready. When the garlic's brown, the curry powder goes in. When the curry powder's nearly black, the meat goes in. Wow! Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Have a look inside the pot. The cut garlic's just trying to cut, starting to colour brown. So you can leave the garlic in if you're real garlic lovers, or you can just remove them garlics out of it. Yeah. Uh, and then once the garlic gets removed, we introduce the curry powder. So mm. there's four of us eating, or three of us. And so I'm going to put in the garlic powder into the base. Probably about two big tablespoons full. Move that garlic about a bit in that oil, and then we're just going to let that. Uh, we're going to let that the herbs really roast hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Next phase. Oh, smelling good already. In, so we almost. If you have a look at that colour now, yeah. it's really changing. It's starting to smoke heavy yeah. which is what makes your clothes smell and you're almost at a black with your with your curry powder and your herbs and spices once you've got it almost to black like that that's very important that you let that do its business to get that flavor into it then what we're going to do is we're going to drop a bit of butter into it nice bit of butter let that butter melt then we're going to get some tomato sauce because not everybody in the caribbean can afford puree in the old days and then we whack a nice big bit of tomato sauce in there. And then we go English mustard. So it's loading up on strong mustard flavour. Gives it a real good deep base line. Then we make that into a real paste. All them base line flavours now we're turning into a big paste. And then once that's really a glutinous paste, we're going to go grab our meat and then we're going to drop our meat straight into that. You can use chicken, we're using pork tonight, you can use chicken, whatever you want. Then I'm going to mix up, get all that baseline flavour into that meat, introduce no water into this in the cooking process. All its water will come out of its meat. So basically once we've coated that meat in completely in that paste you can see the onions in it and the pieces of tomato and then what we're going to do is just leave it like that put the lid on that is it thank you chef is the audience loving it too yeah <laughs> Once the meat's gone in on top and the lid's gone on, we're now going to open it up and show you how much juice and gravy the actual meat creates on its own without adding water. So we're there and now we've got all this gravy in there which will carry on now developing for another probably 20 minutes again. So you'll likely to see twice that amount of meat. Okay, so when it's looking like that you know that uh, uh, it's not going to burn the pan as you can see the heat can be up quite high at this point even though it's a struggle to generate the amount of heat we need with a little yeah, yeah. stove uh, it, it, it's developing nicely come back now 15 minutes on you can now take another look in the pan we've still introduced no water and now the gravy's doubled so we're now in potentially uh, a situation where if you were using a really tender meat you probably wouldn't have to uh, add any more water at all but because we're boiling it down to make a very thick substantial gravy what we're going to do is wash the pan out that the meat came from and then just add some more water a little touch of water 
and then what we're going to do is we're going to boil this now until the onion strands break down the tomato breaks down until that just becomes a paste leaving the meat alone the next stage will be testing the meat for tenderness effectively the curry is now complete we're just waiting for the meat to tenderize wow <laughs> and then uh, everything's been on there for about an hour uh, and now we're at a situation where all of the onions broken down and all of the tomatoes broken down into a base gravy we're now in a situation where the gravy is reducing uh, so uh, uh, if the meat's tender so we're going to get out a piece of meat whatever that meat may be chicken chicken will be good chickens are really quick curry but pork tends to be a little tougher so we're going to drop a piece of pork down on there and we're going to cut it on the side other side the knife yeah when you can do it with that side it's good yeah, 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 yeah. use the right side of the knife <laughs> and then uh, we're going to soak it still a little top good but that could do with about another half an hour i would say we're going to do half an hour then <laughs> yeah you want ice? a little trick that you can try is uh, you can introduce a big handful of ice into the pot what that does is temper the meat cools it down quickly picks it back up that process a couple of times will turn really tough meat into tender meat within a couple of times doing that so you could do that once and then if it's still a little tough you can get another handful of ice and all that time, all the ice is just evaporating off and still making a thick gravy. Oh. But come back in, Maurice, and have a look at the thickness of the sauce now. Okay. But really developing into a thick sauce. So if your meat's not tender enough, you could introduce a little water into that. Uh, and then uh, just to ensure that nothing starts to burn to the bottom. But that is looking really good now. We tasted it. It's got depth of flavour. It's got everything that you need. But don't, if you're cooking curry for other people, keep it baseline. They can introduce, if you like a hot curry, you introduce your own heat. You've got to make sure that you're making a curry that everybody can eat. You know, uh, there's lots of people who go, oh, you're not a real man unless you can eat a really powerful curry. But that's, at the end of the day, that's bullshit. You just make a curry that everybody can enjoy and introduce your own heat. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> Reese and Julia have decided that they can't wait for a curry, so I'm going to have to use the ice. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to drop in. Uh, are you ready, Maurice? I'm going to drop in some ice into that. So that process is going to give me some more water, so my my my, my uh, pan doesn't burn, and it's going to temper the meat. So it's going to instantly hit it cold, and then back to hot, which will allow the, the uh, 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 meat to moisture quicker than uh, if you were just to leave it to boil. Okay. Now give it another 15 minutes with the ice uh, introduced. The ice is gone. It's put some more gravy on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the lid off. What is quite important is that uh, in a Caribbean curry, at this point, some people would introduce coconut milk. Uh, what coconut milk does is uh, thicken up the sauce and uh, obviously give you a very big butt. <laughs> but uh, uh, some people love that coconutty flavour in contrast with the curry and uh, uh, I personally like it but my wife Julie uh, uh, is less keen on coconut. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like gin and tonic. <laughs> so you can uh, so you can take it or leave it, but uh, the introduction of a small amount of coconut cream will enhance the flavour and turn it into a traditional curry. So uh, we take the lid off now and then uh, we give it another 15 minutes and then we're going to eat it. You taste it, Sport? How is it tasting? Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> yeah? Okay, let's dig in. Mm.